is a very exciting news release for us because it is really the first uh, phase of drilling that we've done stepping outside of the Keats Baseline Fault. That's where majority of our work had been focused. And now we've moved into more of a systematic program with a few of our drills stepping north of the Keats Main Zone in an area that has seen no exploration previously and is largely under thin cover. And our first few holes in, sure enough, we plug into a number of new structures that are a high-grade gold bearing. So very exciting. We've had some very encouraging results in this north area. I mean, 45.9 grams per ton over 2.75 meters in hole 578, another 19 grams over 2 meters in hole 610. These are examples of the high-grade mineralization posted within the, the umbra structure. Uh, this is, again, one of those north-south striking fault zones that we've been able to trace over nearly 600 meters that does come through the north end of, of Keats, Maine as well. We've also plugged into another structure that is at a completely different orientation to umbra and what you'll maybe see as penumbra that had significant grades within it as well. We've had 40.6 grams per ton over two meters. The mineralization we found is in a completely different structures unrelated to the Keats baseline fault. These are new, new high-grade um, bearing faults that are north of the Keats zone. The overall footprint of this region that we've identified to date is 630 meters over about a 200 meter plus window of mineralization surrounding the Appleton. Now we've got two drills allocated to that domain of rock, essentially between the north end of Keats and the south end of Golden Joint. These are very brittle host rocks. We're in a, in a brittle environment where they've literally fractured and you have structures propagating in a number of orientations. And where these faults tend to run into one another is where we get these significant zones of mineralization and very high grade intercepts. So we're finding that all of this is connecting there's quite an extensive plumbing system, if you will, that is lighting up all over the place. If you're a gold-bearing fluid migrating through the rocks, all of a sudden you get into these cracks and they're like superhighways. Now those fluids can move really well and they can precipitate and they can drop out their gold. And, and so they love to find their ways into those crack systems. And so the more of those systems we find, the better it is. And that's what we're looking for. We're looking for places where we're getting a number of different structures or features intersecting one another. And that's where we find these zones of high-grade gold mineralization. What we found to date is something that is quite significant. Having a stretch of rock that is almost consistently hosting this mineralization in various forms is absolutely incredible.